Poetry by Alexander and John Bethwin. Life is a drama with a few acts. The actors shift, the scene is often changed. The year is 1804. Alexander is born in the parish of Lethem, John in the parish of Monimil in 1811. Both of their parents were servants. Their mother, Alison Christie, educated the boys at home. Alexander, I well remember sitting on a knee many an evening while she was spinning, listening to Sir James the Rise or Babes of the Wood. When John was little, a three or four year old, his brother Alexander took him to the point of a hill from which the river Tee and part of the village from Eubera were to be seen. And here, the broad expanse of water, bright with sunshine or dark with the shadow of the clouds, with the ships and the rocks, were a perfect romance to a childish eye. More than a year after hard and cruel toils, his joints, on first attempting to move in the morning, creaked like machinery wanting oil. John herded the two family cows at a young age, and later broke up stones along with his brother on the road between Lindors and Newbury. In 1824, John became an apprentice to a linen weaver in Colessi. He earned one and ten pence a day, double the amount of money in comparison to stone breaking. In 1825, John and Alexander purchased looms and set up themselves, John leading and Alexander as his apprentice. Unfortunately, a commercial crash in 1825 brought a premature end to the enterprise and they resumed their occupation as outdoor laborers. After it became known that we were readers, the whole of our acquaintances, far and near, appeared to lend us books. We lived in a house which for the greater part of the time was in such bad repair that when it rained we had to place dishes on the bed to catch the water that oozed through the roof. And when the rain began to fall after we were sleeping, it was no uncommon thing for us to find the bedclothes wet when we awake in the morning. In November 1829, Alexander was blown into the air by a blast of gunpowder. From the number of wounds on the head, face, hands and one leg, recovery was uncertain. Three years later, he was fearfully injured again, with a head so scorched and cut that he bore sad traces for the rest of his life. As an evidence of how little I require for myself, it may be mentioned that the coat in which I now write has actually served me since the year 1827. During the winter of that time it had been on service every day, with the exception of about eight months, for which period, between accidents, smallpox and other diseases, I was mostly confined to bed, or at least unable to wear it much. Charles Kingsley, Alexander's friend and later biographer, said, This house and the house they built will become a pilgrim station 
only second to Burns grief. Many may learn a lesson of great usefulness to themselves and those around them from the simple story of the lives of John and Alexander Bethwin. No tourist has set their foot into the town of Newborough in the search of the Bethlehem brothers. The poetry and stories are in no doubt known by literature scholars and researchers. However, the brothers are mainly forgotten in the bustle of people's daily life. Although the cottage still stands, no plaque indicates of the rich heritage left to us. The gravestone at Abdi Kirk is the last reminder of two great 18th century minds. <laughs>